six foot ladder, probably six foot from the ladder, maybe a little bit more to the swarm. I'm six two. I think I can reach it. Let's give it a try. Okay, so we're looking for a queen, and we're going to try and catch her with this clip. Right there she is. Missed her. There she is. Oh, she's getting out. There she is. Well, there she went. This clip don't have much of a spring to it, so it didn't close all the way and she got out. So now we gotta do this all again. You're the virgin queen. It's probably not necessary that I put her in here, but what it does is it reinsures uh, a better chance of the bees staying and not trying to leave this box. What will happen is the bees will have a chance to uh, draw out some comb via these new frames and uh, empty their bellies, which are now full because when they swarm, they take food with them. Um, so they'll be able to empty their bellies, draw some comb to put that nectar in, and uh, by that point, usually by day two of being in this box, I can release the queen and really I believe it increases the chances of them not leaving. But it's not always necessary and I do not see her. I don't see her. I might have to go without putting her in the clip. Maybe what I need to do is turn it around so I can see the other side wall. The virgin queens are a lot harder to find because they're not mature. They haven't mated, so they're not very long. And then they're for their black or dark color. That's just a whole new game of finding the queen right there. I guess I'm gonna roll the dice, stick the frames back in here that I brought over with it, which are, like I say, are all brand new frames. And hope she stays. 
it's actually less work that way because with the queen clip you do have to come back in a couple days to release her don't ask me what happens when you don't come back how would I know <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do is just stick the frames back in here look at this this is what's going on on my camera hand these frames in here okay so here's a question for you let's test your beekeeping knowledge I just caught this swarm they're now all fanning their wings Hear them? Their butts are up in the air. They're fanning something. What gland are they fanning? Let's see who knows. I don't know something went wonky when I put these boxes together this year and they're not square at all so I gotta watch how I put the frames together I'm gonna squish the queen and I don't need that to happen actually what I think I'm gonna do is lay this ladder on its side use it as a high stand till morning and then I'll relocate them Set you all down here for a second and you watch the bees. Okay, so I've got them laid on the set on the ladder, laying on its side, and that's how I'm gonna leave them until morning because there's still a nice little group that went back up there. If I take this over to my nuke yard, clear across the yard, um, I don't know that they're gonna find each other very well before dark. We've only got about an hour till the sun sets. So I don't think we're expecting any rain tonight, so what I might do. Just leave this lid gapped at the front and get a little bit more airflow to tell these bees up here hey dummies come down here she's not up there anymore okay so it's the day after it's about o'clock p.m. afternoon and what I'm going to do now is these bees seem to be returning with uh, some nectar so what I am going to do is transfer them over to a wooden box and as you can see this is my box from Sue which I've had a couple years this spring um, the Queen and Sue just wasn't laying very well um, so I replaced her and she ended up coming up missing so so the colony did end up dying um, so I'm going to use the box from Sue and transfer these bees into it I guess these will be the new Sue bees so what we've got here is we've got a screen bottom with a removable uh, sticky board on the bottom there um, I'll probably remove that so they can get some air um, but I don't think it's going to take a whole lot to transfer these girls over and I'm anxious to see what they're starting to do with the foundation in there. What do you think, Big Peggy? You gonna sit and watch, girl? Big Peggy. Come on, girl. Talk for us, girl. There we go. We got Big Peggy in there. I throw on my jacket and we'll, uh, we'll get this started. Alright, so I tried to leave Big Peggy up in your 
corner of your screen there. Uh, we'll see how she responds while I uh, work the bees. She's a, what's called a Pekin duck. They get really, really big. And uh, because they get so big, they don't, they don't, they're kind of lazy, let's just put it that way. And uh, Peggy, she just likes to hang out somewhere in the shade while the rest of the ducks, which aren't Pekins, um, travel around the yard. And then they all circle back and end up in the shade taking a nap with her. So that's big Peggy. She was given to me this spring with a few other ducks we got. I'm coming in. Hello, girls. Daddy's home. Okay, so we got a few bees there on the lid. Don't want to block the entrance, I guess, so I'll just lay that on the ground. Give them a little smoke. I don't really think it's going to take a whole lot to get these girls transferred over. It ought to be relatively short. don't look quite so strong or like a very big swarm now that I look at it on the frames. I try to keep an eye open for my queen. Okay, they're starting just overnight. I'll bring this over here and show you. Hopefully you can see that right here. They've already started to draw out some foundation. Now I don't see the queen. We do know she's a virgin. And I assume that she's still here because the swarm is still in the box. Last night I went in and rewatched that video clip of uh, the queen jumping out of the cage and I rewatched it a few times and it didn't really look like she fell in the box. Okay, a lot more drawing out on this one. You see that? I don't see the queen there either. Dang, they've been busy overnight. Look at all that they've drawn out. Very productive girls. So hopefully the queen's on this frame or I've overlooked her or she's not there and that just don't make sense because the bees are still in the box. So let's take a look see. And I do not see her there. I do see her there. Do you see her? She's right here. And we'll give her time to get mated. That'll give the bees some time to get this foundation drawn out, get some food in the frames. And this will be a productive little colony. You know, I wasn't even going to try and mess with it um, after seeing how high they were clustering on the tree. And, you know, I sit in there after dinner last night watching TV and I kept thinking about them. And there's a saying that, I, that kept coming to mind and it goes a little something like this and there's a few different versions of it but this is the way that I remember it. A swarm in May is worth a bale of hay. A swarm in June is worth a silver spoon. A swarm in July, let her fly. Now let me explain that a little bit. A swarm in July, let her fly. Why would you let the bees just fly away? Well here's the reason. A swarm in July, in most cases, is not going to have enough time here in Central Ohio to build up and prepare, and prepare for winter. Now, in that scenario, um, I'm imagining that you're giving a swarm foundation. They've got to draw it all out. Um, a swarm in July, if you were to give drone comb, 
I would probably say he's got a pretty good chance of making it for winter. But that's just how the saying goes, a swarm in July, let it fly. And we're in the middle of June, and I got thinking, a swarm in June is worth a silver spoon. Well, I sell nucleus colonies, and I would sell this completely packed out with bees, a laying queen, a couple frames of honey, maybe a couple frames of brood at different stages, and I would sell this in a cardboard nuke box for $190 with a marked queen. So I'm sitting in there thinking, boy, you're just going to let $190 fly away, huh? That just don't make much sense. You're a farmer. You make money off of livestock, and you're about to let the livestock fly away. I got to go out there and try. So, as you've seen, I tried. And I prevailed. Yippee! Done. Now just for fun, I've got one more swarm over here I caught the other day and I got the queen in a clip. I'm going to take you along while I release her. This nuke right here is the one we got to go in and remove the queen from the clip. Okay, and if I remember right, I got to remove at least two frames to get to the queen clip, which is sitting down on the bottom board. Okay, now reach down here and grab it. See if we can see her come crawling out here in a second. I'm gonna get these frames back in there. That gives us a better chance of seeing her go down between them. Versus just dropping down in a void. Okay. There she is, I seen her. And keep in mind, she is a virgin. Watch for her. She's going to be coming out. Right there she is. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your queen clip. Alright. Just like that, we're done with that one. Get this little girl off of here so I don't squish her. Okay, we'll put that back up there. What a crazy spring it's been. Back in early spring, I made 18 splits. And that did nothing, nothing at all, to stop swarming. I still had, I would guess, eight swarms here at my place and it's just been insane to keep up with constantly swarms I've only lost that I know of one and that's the one that flew clear down to the 4-H camp good for them I guess um, but yeah crazy crazy swarm season I tell you anybody else have this experience that's what I'm curious to know um, regardless what you did the bees still swarmed. Now I do want to mention that the swarm in this video was most likely an after swarm. Now if you're new to beekeeping you might be asking yourself what is an after swarm? Well an after swarm is a swarm that swarms after the primary swarm which is usually a much larger cluster of bees. After swarms are relatively small. You see what happens is is once the queen runs out of room to lay in a hive, um, her and the worker bees together decide, you know, it's time to swarm. So the workers will start to raise, uh, turn some of those eggs that the queen just laid into queen cells, and then she will go on a diet, so she's able to go out and fly to wherever they're going to swarm to, um, 
once she gets to where she's able to fly, her and half or a majority of the bees will fly away in a primary swarm. Um, the way to judge whether you're getting a primary swarm or an after swarm is whether the queen's mated. If you've got a mated queen, you've got the primary swarm. After swarms are usually virgins. Um, they're those queen cells that all the workers decided to raise. Well, usually what happens is the first queen out, she starts to make a pipping noise and all the other queens that have emerged in the hive will find each other and they will fight. Well, if one queen emerges first before all the others, usually what happens is she'll go around and destroy all the queen cells. But if she happens to miss a couple of queen cells, you'll have after swarms, which is what I had back here on the tree. And like I say, they're a swarm, but the virgin queen is just a little bit smaller than what they would be if they were at the primary swarm. Okay, so I'm glad that I'm hoping that the swarms are, are done. I really am. I'm, ho I'm hoping they're done because, you know, it never fails when bees are swarming. You're obviously doing other things <laughs> and don't really have time to mess with swarms, but you don't want them to fly away. So you take a few minutes, you put them in a box and, and, and hope for the best. So some of these other things I want to talk about, I'm kind of excited to announce that my book, um, I told you we've been working to get it into illustration. Well, right now what we're doing, um, I just found this out the other day myself. Um, we're doing a battle of the illustrators, if you will. There's a bunch of illustrators that have signed up to participate in this. And the way it works is, is we've gave them some sample photos, um, of course, geared around beekeeping. And these illustrators have to do their best work to put that into an illustration. And then what we're gonna do is take all of those illustrations and judge them and see which one, which illustrator we think will be best for our book, and or for my book, and then they'll go through and illustrate the whole book, and then it's going to be ready for you all. So we're really, really close, um, and you know it's pretty exciting. I'm excited. Um, I have a meeting every week um, with the people working on my book, and um, it's proposed that next week maybe I might get to see some of these illustrations. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm excited to see what this artwork's going to look like in my book. And um, yeah, I just think it's exciting, folks. Um, and I do want to mention, you know, I've besides the book, I've got a tiny other little secret that I've been keeping back from you all. And that'll be coming up here real soon. It's, it's going to be a big announcement, really. Um, it's not a tiny secret. It's a big announcement that's coming. And uh, if you're interested in um, finding out a little bit more about this, um, one way you can maybe get a leg up on it is to join my email list. And I'm going to leave a, a link down in the video description where you can go over and just sign up with your email and you'll get emails updating you about this big announcement. And like I said, maybe even before it's released here on YouTube. So it's a little way for you to get your leg up and to make sure that you're introduced to this new announcement if you would miss it when I would happen to release it. Um, what I'll do though, if I remember, is I'll copy that link down in the comments and pin it to the top to make it a little bit easier for you all to find. Um, this new announcement that I'm going to share with you, I'll give you a, a little bit of insight without sharing too much. Um, I think, I really believe that it's going to be a great resource for experienced and new beekeepers. Um, a place where we can all work together. Um, yeah, I don't want to say much more than that, but it's it's pretty exciting, and I cannot wait to announce it to you all. So, big news there. Ladybug, where are you at, girl? Come here. The people wants to see their ladybug. Come here, Moosey. Had Moosey over a year now. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Ladybug, she's been here for ages. She's been here for ages. Thank you, Ladybug. <laughs> They're good kids. They're good kids. That's about... So that about wraps it up, folks. But I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below in the comments section. And if you really enjoyed the video and you'd like to support my work without costing anything, you can slam on that like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can even subscribe and make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when I release those videos. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next week. and. Uh, 
hey, you have a good week, and I hope your bee season's going well. Get ready for summer, because it's coming. The heat is a coming, folks. Take care. We'll see you next week, folks.